Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Snow already starting in parts of southeast Michigan, but we've got more coming in tonight. We'll track the snow moving in and the temperatures moving down. During the last 12 years, Matthew Stafford has certainly made an impact here at Ford Field, but it's what Matthew and his wife Kelly have planned next for the people of Detroit that will change lives. I'm Hank Winchester with that story coming up. But we're going to begin here at five with the second impeachment of President Trump and House impeachment managers wrapping up their case after two days of at times intense testimony. Over these past 48 hours, we've seen Michigan come up time and time again uh, as a preview uh, of what was to come at the Capitol. And today was no different. Kim. House impeachment managers used the rioters' own words as evidence and argued the former president would incite more violence if he's not convicted. Alice Barr is in Washington tonight with the latest. Alice. Devin and Kimberly, in their final arguments, House managers accusing the former president of a pattern of condoning violence among his supporters and asserting that the Capitol rioters believed they were following his orders. <laughs> Images of the chaos and violence of the Capitol siege again gripping the Senate chamber in the impeachment trial of former President Trump with a focus on the rioters' own words. We were invited by the President of the United States! House managers seeking to cement their case that the violent mob was acting at the former president's direction. They truly believed that the whole intrusion was at the president's orders. And we know that because they said so. I thought I was following my president. I thought I was following what we were called to do. The president told them to be there. And so they actually believed they would face no punishment. House prosecutors trying to establish a pattern. Let us in! Calling the spring 2020 storming of the Michigan State Capitol a dress rehearsal for what happened months later in Washington. He had just seen how easily his words and actions inspired violence in Michigan. House managers laying out a series of instances dating back to the deadly clash in Charlottesville in 2017. In each case, they say the former president fired up his followers and refused to condemn them or take responsibility afterward. And the Democrats asked senators to consider what will happen if Mr. Trump is not convicted in this trial. If he gets back into office and it happens again, We'll have no one to blame but ourselves. Wrapping up their arguments, the impeachment managers aiming to draw an indelible line between former President Trump's words and actions and the deadly attack on the U.S. Capitol. The Trump legal team begins its defense tomorrow with the core argument that the former president was exercising free speech and never explicitly called for violence. In Washington, Alice Barr, Local 4. Okay, Alice, and tonight we're getting a sense of what it's like inside the Senate chamber during the trial. Ahead of 530, you'll hear from Michigan Senators Gary Peters and Debbie Stabenow how they think the trial has gone so far and the one thing they say could change the minds of some of their colleagues. We've had the sun out for most of the day, but heading into tonight, clouds starting to move back in. Yeah, let's get over to Ben, who's uh, tracking another shot of snow on the way too, Ben. Yeah, all of us uh, get that shot tonight, Kim and Devin, but some of us getting an early start, and it's rare that we still talk about lake effect snow in February because A, the lakes are usually frozen, B, there's usually not as big of a temperature difference, uh, but with these numbers being so far below average and the uh, lakes still open in some spots, we are getting this onshore flow, and that's what's bringing in those lake effect bands there for St. Clair and even, uh, I should say, St. Clair County and also off of Lake St. Clair into parts of Wayne and Macomb County. So if you see a few flakes here in the next couple hours, so be it. In fact, there may be some minor accumulation there in St. Clair and Sanilac County uh, from that band coming off of Lake Huron. That wraps up, though, by about 7, 8 o'clock, and then we start looking for the widespread lighter stuff to move mostly north of 8 Mile tonight. That'll wrap up before the sun comes up tomorrow, and it's not going to be much. About a half inch of snow is all we're expecting. But the temperatures will be in the teens by midnight. We'll talk even colder temperatures and even more snow, multiple chances. Coming up, guys. Yeah. Okay, Ben, thank you. Our other top story tonight, Governor Whitmer submitted her third budget today. She's looking to right the financial ship during the pandemic. Rod Maloney's been pouring over the plan and shows us the latest. Rod. What the governor's doing here is wrapping the entire state budget around her $5.5 billion 
COVID relief plan. And for the help on this, she says she needs the legislature to cooperate with her. The full budget is $67 billion. The governor looks to draw down on the Michigan General Fund by $11.5 billion, the school aid fund by $14.7 billion. It's 7% more than 2020, but in reality, it's just an inflationary budget, just a 2% increase. It's the realities of, of the moment that we're in. Uh, we wanted to prioritize and really stay laser focused on the things that we need to do to help get our state through this tough time and, and get our economy back on track. Outside of COVID, the governor is keenly focused on education, claiming the largest spending increase in state history. She wants to spend more than $200 million on K-12 education, pushing her per-pupil funding over $8,000. She's also looking at considerable one-time spending on dealing with the educational problems from COVID. $250 million for what she calls academic recovery, $200 million to stabilize school district budgets. Then there's the direct COVID response for public health. She wants $360 million to keep in place the $2 an hour wage increase direct care workers get. And she wants another $38 million to help nursing homes replace their lost revenue. The governor also wants $300 million for bridge repair, and she wants to help Michigan cities with $175 million in budget stabilization for COVID response. We've got to be united in our fight against it. Now, the governor says that she's also trying to be fiscally sound here, and one of the things she wants to do is take $175 million and return that to the rainy day fund that had been taken out to put that fund over a billion dollars. In West Bloomfield, Rod Maloney, Local 4. Okay, Rod, the governor and the legislature continue battling over their visions of how to spend COVID relief money. Tonight on Local 4 News at 6, Rod will be back with a look at how $50 million in already approved COVID relief money is still sitting in the bank unspent. All right, take a look now at today's coronavirus numbers. The state reports 1,284 new cases in the past 24 hours, bringing that number back up over 1,000 for the first time this week. Also, today's 75 new deaths marks another grim milestone, bringing the total number of coronavirus deaths in our state over 15,000. Now to the vaccine. 1,000 new doses have made it to Michigan in the past day, keeping that total to a little more than 2 million. 52,000 more shots have gone into arms, bringing that total to close to 1.4 million. City of Detroit takes another step in getting more vulnerable groups of people vaccinated for COVID-19. The residents 18 years of age or older with documented proof of an intellectual or developmental disability can now make an appointment to get vaccinated at the TCF Center. That includes anyone suffering from cerebral palsy, autism, Down syndrome, or hearing or vision impairment. Home health caregivers who live in Detroit can also now get the vaccine. The vaccines are 95% effective, but caregivers and these individuals are in such close contact all the time uh, that it's extremely important that both uh, are protected. Meanwhile, Mayor Duggan is going to meet with President Biden at the White House tomorrow to discuss President Biden's American Rescue Plan. Well, for weeks now, we've shown you just how hard it can be for seniors to get those critical first doses of the vaccine. Beyond getting the shots, even getting signed up for an appointment can be a huge and confusing process, especially since computers are needed to do it. But well, now the state is stepping in to help clear the confusion. Sean Lay shows us how they're doing it. Now, as you know, we have been sounding the alarm to the state about the state leaving seniors out of the vaccination process. We even spoke with Congresswoman Debbie Dingell. She called for the state to set up a phone system, making the process so much easier for seniors. So here's what happened during the state's response to that late today. Welcome everyone to our Michigan vaccine information session. The Michigan Department of Health and Human Services sees the red flags we put up for them and they hear from the seniors who are beyond frustrated. Many seniors, they are computer savvy, many are not. And they just like to speak with someone on the phone to get a COVID vaccination appointment. Late today, the Department of Health and Human Services had a talk with seniors online where seniors had to register online and they learned almost everything they already knew. When your local health department in your area is ready to begin scheduling vaccinations in your community, information will be posted on the Michigan.gov 
forward slash COVID vaccine website. Then the state walked seniors through how to navigate their state website. And the state again pushed seniors to call 211. And when they did that Friday, lines were flooded and no one could get through. You can actually call them for help on how to get a vaccine appointment if you are unable to identify it on the website or you do not have access to the internet or a computer. This is, however, the very first time state officials have acknowledged what we have been reporting, that the system as it is right now is not working for seniors. For them, it's a matter of life and death. Sean Lay, Local 4. All right, Sean, it was the first of its kind in the country. New tonight, how WGPR helped amplify black voices in Detroit at a time when it was needed most. Is it safe for seniors who are vaccinated to get together? Can you drink too much water after getting the vaccine? I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge answering those questions and more about the vaccine ahead. Matthew Stafford's time as quarterback with Detroit Lions, well, that has come to an end. But now Matthew and his wife are focused on the future and helping people here in Detroit. I'm going to show you how you can get involved coming up new tonight.